Now, this might be one of two parts, so we'll see where this goes. So, Doc, what do you got for us tonight? Yeah, so we're going to have to build a little foundation today. I think most people know when you read your Bible mm -hmm. that there's a biblical calendar built into the Bible. Oh, okay, yes. However, that biblical calendar can be prophetic, and we want to talk a little bit about that as we're heading into the fall, because there's some things in the Bible that oh, yeah. are call, called appointed times. A lot of times people think they're Jewish holidays, uh -huh. but they're actually in the Bible, and they're appointed times. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yes. Um, I think the reason why a lot of people think these holidays or these appointed times are Jewish is because Jewish people do them. So, of course, we think they're Jewish. But if we go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1, God tells us about these appointed times throughout the chapter that they are His appointed times. In fact, in Hebrew, uh -huh. it's Moedim La'adonai. They are the appointed times that belong to the Lord. Now, Ooh. yeah, and they have prophetic significance, these appointed times. Mm. They're actually, and we'll talk about it here, they are a prophetic picture of God's redemptive plan of mankind. Wow. Now, some pastors or preachers or teachers out there may say, well, that's in the Mosaic Covenant, so therefore it doesn't apply to me. Mm. I don't necessarily believe that, but if we want to go there, we can go back to Genesis chapter 1, when God was creating the heavens and the earth. Okay. And if we go back there, we find, I think it's verse 18. Bishop will throw it up for us yeah. if it's not. Yes. He'll throw up that scripture yes. for us of course he in does. Genesis. Uh, but it's in chapter 1. And when God creates the sun and the moons and the stars for days and it says, and seasons, the word is not seasons. That's how it's translated in wow, English in the Bible. Wow. Uh -huh. It's actually the word Moedim that I just mentioned out of Leviticus chapter 23, okay. which means appointed times. Ooh. And so it really says in the book of Genesis during creation that the sun and the moon, one of their purposes was for the appointed times. Well said. And wow, so wow, wow. at creation is when it happened. And so it's all for mankind, not just for the Jewish people. In fact, I would say even if we looked at it in Leviticus 23, uh -huh. if they belong to him, now remember the Hebrew says Moedim La Adonai. These are appointed times that belong to God. So if they belong to God, doctor, and we belong to God, and we are, he's our inheritance, and we're sons and daughters of the Most High God, then they're ours. They're our wow. part of our inheritance. Okay. So I wanted to start there because we're going to move into the fall festivals very shortly. Mm -hmm. This will be a time uh, that speaks of the second coming of Jesus. Wow. Okay. And there's a month that comes right prior to that. It's called okay. the month of Elul in Hebrew. Ooh. And this month will begin in September 3rd. We're right at the end of August where we're taping this, but September 3rd, the evening of September 3rd is when that biblical month starts. And the month of Elul is a preparation for what, what will come in the seventh month of the first day in the biblical month called uh, Rosh Hashanah. It's the head of the year. This is when That's kings good. are crowned and placed in authority. And Hallelujah. this is when Jesus is going to come back and reign on earth. Okay. Follow it up right behind that will be Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. Okay. That will be Judgment Day. And then right behind that on the tails of that is we say tabernacles in English. It's actually Sukkot in Hebrew, and it means booths. It means when God oh, will wow. dwell with us here on earth. Mm. So all these things have prophetic 
ramifications. And I want to focus on the month of Elul because in the synagogue, dating way back to Jesus' day, when the month of Elul began, mm -hmm. they would sound a shofar every day. The shofar is a ram's horn, and they would sound that shofar every day. Mm -hmm. People are probably wondering why. Well, the reason why they did it then, it was a call to wake us up spiritually. It was a call for us to sit back, take a look at our lives, and do some introspection. And lastly, it was a call to repentance. Wow. And so when we look at God's calendar and where we're at with God's calendar, we know that the soon coming of the Lord is, is upon us. Mm -hmm. And so we're in a season where I think we really need to do some introspection as yes. the Big C Church, and we need to be doing some repentance in the Big C Church. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, which will be a part of my book, in the last days, Paul tells us there will be troubling times. Mm. But as we read on, it's troubling times in the church. It's these people that act religious, but they deny the power thereof. Amen. Speak and it. so one of the things that's one of the high points, and the first thing he says, uh -huh. people are going to be lovers of themselves. And what can we say about society today? Are we not lovers of them of that's ourselves? Really good, yes. I mean, that's the zeitgeist of today. Uh -huh. I mean, that's what TikTok's all about. That's what Instagram's all about. Facebook is out there, but this is all about self-promotion uh -huh. and self-embellishment and these sort of things. And unfortunately, it's affected the body of Christ. Wow. And so we need to step back and see if that's had an effect on us. Okay. Now, Jesus tells a parable about a rich man. So let's start there. Okay. He's already rich. Yeah. And what happens? Uh -huh. God blesses him. And what he thinks to himself, what should I do with these extra blessings? Can't put it in my current barns. They're already full. I got to build a bigger barn. And Jesus condemns that and says, you fool, do you not know that your soul will be required of you? Maybe even the next day. I think this is being spoken to the church today. Wow. Unfortunately, the giving in the church is not where it should be, Dr. Ken, mm -hmm. at all. In fact, if you Fire. look at statistics, and you can go on Google and check this out, uh, we give less in percentages than the church did during the Great Depression. Wow. How sad is that? That is sad. Wow. That is sad. And so, unfortunately, we have people building bigger barns. They're getting bigger homes, remodels, or multiple homes, or whatever. They're going beyond what they need as a family. Now, I don't want people having to be dependent on others. I like the idea of the believers being givers and not borrowers, being the head and not the tail. Amen. But there comes a point where when is enough enough? You know, here's a good question for everybody out there. What is the goal? Is it to win souls or to make money? Now, actually, this is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> because both is required. We need money to go out and win souls. Teach you know, it, teach it. These big mm. stadiums and stuff that you rent out, these big conferences that we do, even a small conference that we do is $70,000. The stuff that Reinhard Bonnke was doing is $750,000 mm. to a million bucks for one event. And so we need the church to step up in this area, put mm -hmm. their money where their mouth is. You say you love God? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus says your heart is where everything else you're putting your investment in. That's where your heart. Jesus says you can't serve God and mammon, the pursuit of wealth. The problem is, it's not that you're gaining wealth, it's what your focus with the wealth is. Is it just to self-embellish yourself and build bigger barns? Or is it for the kingdom? 
We need wealth builders out there. We right. need that money for the kingdom so that we can do our job and get out there and build, uh, and build the kingdom, mm -hmm. not build bigger barns. And so, you know, not everybody's called to be an evangelist. Not everybody's called to preach globally. Not everybody's uh, called to put on these uh, huge seminars and these mm -hmm. summits and all these things. But you know what? There are people out there that are called to pray for us when we're doing those sort that's of right. things. And there's people out there with money that's supposed to be kingdom influencers with their money. That's right. And so I hope and pray during the season of Elul that those that have money can step back for a moment and do a self-examination of themselves and think about what are you doing with your money? I mean, I want you to take care of you and your family. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you have excessive money, you have more than enough, and you're building bigger barns to hold yes, it with, amen. that money needs to go to the kingdom. It's all about the assignment that we have for the kingdom. And so I hope and pray that that will be something that you will do and think about during the month of Elul, because we need, this is the month, this is that prophetic season where we need to take a look at ourselves and make sure that our heart is right in many areas. You know, King David said, search me, O God, search my heart and see if there is any wicked way in me. You know, that's a scary prayer. I kind of like to tailor that prayer to the way I like to say it, Dr. Ken, but that seems to be a scary prayer and only because mm. we don't know what our heart is. I think it's the prophet Jeremiah says the heart is exceedingly wicked and who could know it? God knows it, we don't. And so during this season, mm. I hope and pray that you will take uh, self-examination of yourself as we are wrapping up here in the last days. There's going to be a great gathering of souls and then the Lord's going to return. But the only way we can get out right. and get those souls, we need finances. Mm -hmm. We need finances. I'm not asking you necessarily to give to me or to Dr. Ken, but you with money out there, that's your calling and your gifting in Him and you need to be asking the Lord where that money's to go. It's not to go in a bigger barn that you built, okay? It's to go to the ministry. Our main assignment is for the kingdom, and the kingdom is to expand. In Matthew 28, Jesus says, all authority has been given to him, and so therefore we are as the body to go out and make disciples of Israel? Is that what it said? No. No. All nations. The kingdom's assignment is to go out and take ground for Jesus, to reclaim stuff that we were neglectful, and the kingdom of darkness is running rampant in the world. But Jesus right now is calling out people to retake the kingdom for him and in preparation of his coming. And if you're those people that have the money, it all starts there. I'm sorry, but it all starts with money. We can't do anything mm -hmm. unless we have the money to go out and make those trips and hold those conferences, hold those summits, rent those stadiums, calling in the young people, whatever it is that we're called to do, you're a part of the body. You have a part to play. And for those that don't have money and you're not called to this, hey, how, but maybe you have a prayer ministry. Hook up with us. You know what? You're the front line of the football team. I don't care if you're the best running back in the world. I can be the most anointed preacher out there on stage, and I'm going nowhere unless you've done the praying for me first and yeah. open up those Teach holes. That. Wow, wow, wow. You know, we can put this in a military term. If you look at how the military goes about attacking and taking ground, what's the first thing they do? It's an aerial attack. 
back. We have to take the air. We have to dominate the air. That's the prayer that has to go forth. We need those mm -hmm. prayer warriors. We need those people with prevailing prayer. That's you right. need to saddle up with a ministry and join them so that we can move forward. Even the apostle Paul talked about this. He asked, uh, what was it? The Corinthians that they would pray for him so that he would have the utterances and the words to go forth with power. Wow. We need the same thing. If Paul needed it, surely we need it. So I'm just asking you, I don't know who you're excited about. If you're excited about this ministry here at the Marketplace Network, hook up, pray, and financially support. If it's what I'm doing in the future with Dr. Aaron Winter with, with Hearts of Fire International Ministries, go check it out. He's reaching nations, preaching to hundreds of thousands of people that we need the money to go out and do those things. And if it's not us, maybe it's somebody else out there. Maybe it's Jonathan Shuttlesworth that's doing an awesome work. Maybe it's uh, one of the disciples and men, uh, the people that Reinhard Bonnke men, uh, discipled. Maybe it's one of them. Mm. But you find who you're supposed to saddle up with, you prayer warriors out there and you people that your ministry is money, you figure out who you're supposed to saddle up with and step out in faith. Let's do this. Let's do this together. And let's do this for Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know, I want to add to that. I think it's a, a, everything he spoke was real and right to the heart of the matter. There's so many of us. That's why there's so many ministers, but we need so many more. They say, let's just say, We'll put a number on it. I don't know what it is. Nobody knows the number. A billion people, they say for every hundred should be a minister. That doesn't mean other ministries can't be bigger than that. What I'm saying is this, we need people we can relate to. Whoever that is, that's what Dr. C is talking about. Relating to the minister that relates to you, that you can help them. What happens is you get the same reward as they do. L let me challenge you right now. I'll, I'll show you something here right now. Right there on the bottom of the screen is Dr. Chet's. Zell, I want you to test this. God says if we test all, test them in the tithing thing. If you're not tithing to a church, I want you to start giving a seed to Dr. C. This is how you do it. Zell them ten dollars, twenty five, fifty, whatever it is. But do it consistently and do it monthly. But you know it's going somewhere because he gives to a lot of ministries, Africa, a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm. It take me too long to tell you all the ministries. He's been involved in a lot of conferences, and it takes a lot of money for him to fly back and forth well, to our hitting, studio. We're going to hit like three or four conferences already, or continents. I'm sorry, three or four continents this year alone. We're going to Africa. That's good. We're going to Pakistan. We're going to South Korea, mm -hmm. and there's probably going to be some more. Uh, Africa's a big one for us. Amen. Every time we minister to Africa, miracles happen. And I'm talking big time miracles. And so Africa's going to be a big one for us. It's not going to be just Uganda. But 2025, we've got these plans. I know that Pakistan is costing me and Dr. Aaron 70 grand. You know, and we're not rich people. So we need those people out there in the body who have been called and make money. This is your calling in the Lord. That's right. You're the ones that are supposed to step up for these type of ministries so that we can go out. We're not asking you to go out with us, but you're a part of the ministry. It's your 401k spiritual program. Anything that we do out there, you're a part of it and you get the reward for it. Amen. So, so generally, and Dr. C, why don't you pray us out? Because okay. we're running out of time here. All right. For, pray for something. You know, I sense uh, just the show, the anointing on this ministry that yes. he has. Pray for something crazy that we normally wouldn't pray for. <laughs> something out of the box that the people would that are watching that would say, I nobody ever calls this out or nobody sees this or I have this problem or whatever that is, whatever the Lord's showing you so the people can see God is using this young man to touch the nations. This is an interesting one. Okay, here's an out of the box one. I think Holy Spirit has just spoken to me. This sounds really crazy. 
For you that want to get your healing, I'm talking physical healing. Amen. There's some of you out there that God will release healing on you when you release your finances. Ooh. Now that down. sounds crazy. Now I'm not some prosperity preacher that's yeah, we know. driving yeah. around fancy cars and stuff. God is the God of prosperity. If you don't believe it, go read your Bible. He wants to prosper you in all areas of your life. God is a giving God. I mean, who doesn't know John 3:16? Right. For God so loved the world right. that he gave. He's a giver and he can outgive you and he can outgive me. So my challenge to you That's is good. there's some of you out there. I believe Holy Spirit has spoken to me that you have a physical need Amen. and you haven't seen breakthrough. You want breakthrough? Then give crazily and you'll get your breakthrough in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And what Dr. C is talking about, not a tip, you know, something that's a sacrifice for you. $10 yes. is a sacrifice. I'm not saying give away the rent, your car pay. I'm not no. saying that or your children's fee, uh, college fund. I'm not talking about that. He, he's talking about something that's sacrificial, something that's a stretch for you to give. How about this? Instead of taking that vacation, that fancy vacation, why don't you budget a different type of vacation and take some of that money and show God how much you love and care about his kingdom. What about something like that? That's excellent. Good word. So remember, as you sow the seed, that's how we receive. If you're struggling financially, let's go the other way. Let's say you have no extra finances. Well, what's the difference? You can't pay the rent, you can't pay the car, whatever. I'm not saying yep. give it all, but give a portion of that and believe God and he'll show you the financial economy and God's kingdom is sowing and reaping, not buying it is. Itself. It's in Genesis, for goodness sake. You know it, that God produces seed after it's like kind. Yeah. So if you're going to sow financially, just like you sow into the word and sow into prayer Absolutely. and sow into praise, when you sow financially, you're going to reap financially. And I'll close with a scripture, Genesis 12, 3. He says, I'll make your name great. Now, if, it, if you weren't going to matter or mean anything, he's going to get your name out there because you sowed in to Dr. C that travels the world and ministers to all these places. So by your, don't, I know it sounds crazy, just by a donation, something you would give, uh, if you saw somebody homeless or you saw a children's uh, orphanage going up, you stopped by and gave them some money or something. It's the same thing, but do it consistently. That's what God wants to see. And stretch this one out, like he said, vacation, something like that. But and those that don't have money, stretch out and see what God will do with you. Don't think here, the faith is here. Do it today. Today's the 28th. I just have to say this. It means being led by the Spirit. So ask God. You want to close this up? Yeah. Um, just think about this for a minute. We don't need your money. God wants to partner with you for the kingdom. That's what he wants to do, Amen. especially for you that have money and don't need to build bigger barns. That money needs to be going to the kingdom. I thought that was a very prophetic word. Because of time, we'll close now. This is Dr. Uh, Chet. You'll see him next week on Prophetic Spotlight. I'm Dr. Ken. And don't forget, you're watching the Marketplace Network. And don't forget, it sells right down there so generously. We'll see you next week. God bless you. See you then.